it's side time for grade 11 students these days we are talking about the biosphere lesson and uh, the man and the environment sub chapter and out of the 100 questions we have already discussed 76 questions today this video is about 77 to 100 question so let's start the discussion here conventional food patterns Nowadays we just talk about the food patterns of the people because mostly the people have just tempt to go for that uh, instant food styles. So what is the difference between these three food type? One is organic, other one natural and conventional. The present uh, food style is just take consider as the conventional one some uh, facts we can compare I'm not going to compare all the things you can post the video and see the others as well look at the basic things artificial flavors in organic food type we never use them natural food also naturally not exist but in the conventional food or that instant food may be used artificial colors in organic we never use natural ones not exist again may be used in that Artificial preservatives also never contain in the organic food or the in natural ones not contains but um, may be used in conventional one likewise artificial fertilizer pesticides and uh, irradiations uh, or the gen genetically engineered uh, or the G uh, GMOs we call and genetically modified ones uh, can be used in the conventional foods but normally in other two types uh, organic or natural ones we don't use them I will show you another small image here look at this this is the Mediterranean diet or the Western diet I mean the, the organic or the diet that can be taken by the rural people and also Western diet this is popular in the urban area in the villagers eat this and the rural in the urban area people eat this type of diets and uh, the component or its composition is completely different you can see uh, the people who consume organic food in their food fruits and vegetables or the oil, oil types uh, play a great role or the great amount they consider but when considering the western diet less amount of vegetables whole grains legumes are used but uh, the higher amount of Desserts, sweets, or the processed meat, red meat, or the highly processed food are used in higher amount also. Not the whole grains, they take the just the flour types which are processed. And uh, that is the this is the better one for which leads the natural life as the human being also act as an animal, therefore. As an animal this type of food style we should maintain but once we go to this one lot of uh, non-contagious diseases or the non-infectious diseases can be caused and that's about the conventional food styles let's move on to the questions and answers compare two differences between traditional diet and modern diet Traditional diets contain balanced nutrients, but modern diets contain more oily, starchy food and artificial flavors. That's what we discussed in the previous slide. 78, uh, the, sorry, the 77 second factor, traditional diet hydrates the body well, hydrates the body well because it has a lot of uh, natural food or the fruits or vegetables, but modern diet dehydrates the body. Once we take the modern diet, we feel more thirsty because that starchy oily food uh, just dehydrates our body and the next one traditional diet provide more fiber supplementaries and it is the condition of the fecal fast passing that means that it is up the constipation conditions but the modern diet lack of fibers lead constipation 78th question how do natural flavors helpful to lead a healthy life natural flavor types cinnamon clove or the saffron or such ones how it lead healthy life number one improve the taste order and appetite of food and interest to food 
next one contains bacteria bactericides that cidal that means the they destroy the bacteria or it attacks the improve our immunity in the body uh, contains bactericidal properties and the minimize harmful effects caused by the food if one food contains some toxic substance due to the natural flavor types that toxic substances can be destroyed out and let's move on to the natural flavors that's what we discussed just before these are some popular natural flavors which can act in different ways uh, there are many top ones and the top three are these three claw cinnamon and black pepper and turmeric mustard ginger cumin or garlic they they are also helpful to improve our immunity and to strengthen the body processes claw usually good antioxidant and uh, therefore uh, it's a good uh, uh, or a solid uh, solution for a lot of diseases cinnamon also acts as the antioxidant and it also has a kind of a, um, uh, the ability to improve our immunity and black pepper is good for the stomach or the digestive system related problems uh, likewise turmeric act as uh, antiseptic i mean just killing the it has ability of destroying bacteria likewise once we consider or the once we take natural flavors we can minimize the harmful effects of the other food and also we can lead healthy life with that for the heart related problems garlic is good option good or the good solution we know that likewise let's move on to this one this is this is given in the ayurveda in ayurvedic diets they divide the diets into three groups vata diet pitta diet and kapha diet vata means uh, something related to the air pitta means related to the bile bile secreted by the liver you know this and uh, kapha means it's related to the phlegm and uh, when taken according to the body styles body type that uh, the diet types can be selected this is coming in the eastern ayurvedic uh, science or the medical science let's move on to the questions and answers state natural flavor which control the blood glucose level that is cinnamon what is the best natural flavor that should add uh, into food to relieve the abdominal disorders the paper we discussed that according to ayurveda how types of reactions occur in the human body are classified there are three air or the vata va bile pit and uh, also pegam the kapha these are the three things according to that we just select the diets as well next uh, the carbon footprint and the water footprint what is carbon footprint uh, here the carbon means mostly the amount of carbon dioxide that we release see this total amount of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases emission by an organization that's the carbon footprint and it measures the impact of activities on the environment in particular climate change how much carbon dioxide or greenhouse gases we emit in a process of kind of production and relates the amount of greenhouse gases produced through the burning fossil fuels uh, for electricity heating and transportation the ma mainly we burn fossil fuels to produce electricity for the heating pro processes and the major one is the transportation so how much carbon dioxide we release during this process is the carbon footprint in the last part one tons or the kilograms of carbon dioxide as an example if you take kind of food type and uh, the, imagine that is apple when this apple is produced in australia or new zealand or kind of country and once it is import to sri lanka the whole process of production of apple releases some amount of carbon dioxide it start from the beginning when prepare in the ground then machines release carbon dioxide when transporting ships or the airplanes they release carbon dioxide 
once it is locally transport the buses so, sorry the lorries or maybe the other cargoes they also release carbon dioxide likewise people who sell those release carbon dioxide likewise the amount of whole carbon dioxide released by that product is the carbon footprint of that product and uh, what is water footprint and that's similar once we use or the once we make a product how much water does it take to produce normally one liter of tap water only one liter of tap water the water footprint is one liter because the tap water does not process directly we take water but one liter of bottled water that is five liters to produce one bottled water during the filtration process some water amount waste out the people who work to bottle that and also to make plastic they also consume some water all the amount of water consumed during this production just added to this therefore the option is if you can, if you have tap water or the clean water you can use that one without buying the bottles because if you buy this type of bottle you are wasting out 4 liters of water unnecessarily if you go to the next one here the cup of tea one cup of tea one cup of coffee when making one cup of tea 30 liters of water spent it doesn't mean 30 liters added to this cup that means once we take the tea and when, when tea comes to this cup here the tea processing tea making process consumes 30 liters and in coffee production that is even higher more 140 liters it's spent likewise when always when considering this one we must think how much water it consumes. if you throw out this one this coffee without drinking you have to think that you are just 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 like throwing 140 liters of water wastage of food can consume or just waste out a lot of water that's the meaning of this water footprint concept choose more often to drink tap water eat whole unprocessed food processed foods cons consume more more water here then and also the reduce your carbon footprint by buying local products local products when we buy the uh, imported ones normally a lot of water or the carbon both consume for that this is the end of uh, this chapter or let's go to the questions explain what is called carbon footprint carbon footprint represent impact of human activities to produce on greenhouse effect expressed equivalent to carbon dioxide tons how many tons of carbon dioxide how it is called how much fresh water does the product take to production and the marketing process that is the water footprint Next, food mile. What are food miles? Food miles are a measure of how far a food item has been transported. How far a food item transported from is the production place to the consumption. If the production place is a farm, uh, farm, and if you consume it at a dining room then how far it traveled any food item how far it traveled is the food mile why do food miles matter food which have traveled long distance have been transported boat airplane trucks so when it is transported longer distance more fuel burn that is the next thing fuel burning is higher and when the burning fuel is releasing carbon dioxide that means it can cause to increase the carbon footprint another aspect food miles that also involve live animals the further distance they to travel the greater the stress uh, if we just transporting live animals also they are stress increasing if we use the food miles using the the horse carts or the or the bullock carts also the same process take place and let's go for an option here look at this conventional food and local food we discussed about conventional food type and uh, here if they are importing from a country or if you are taking from locally 
the distance has clearly different when we bring the garlic from somewhere then 2000 miles it's from if it is import from another country but if we can draw it locally with the less distance we can obtain that also if we can draw at the home garden you can make it zero and uh, next go to the next chapter here actually let's move on to the questions and answers here first uh, 84th question what are the factors effect on food mile two things quantity of food the amount of food and the place it is produced at the distance between the production place and the consumption place and calculate the food mile given meal look at this uh, the rice made of this samaharam it's uh, 85 miles from bandaravel and the potato the bandaravel 5 minutes and cabbage village 1 mile centella 0 mile that means it is taken from the home garden that's why i said uh, when you take it from the home garden you can make the distance that it travels zero and uh, spreads from another country thailand it's 2650 miles and curd from Mampara 80 miles so if you add all these things you can gain the food mile 85 for the rice and this is potato and cabbage and this is centella or the gotukola and uh, this is thai, uh, the spread brought from the thailand and the curd here uh, 2821 miles is the answer and look at this if we can cut off the spread from this or if you can find the spreads locally from the country itself then you can reduce it to the lesser value than than 200 that's the advantage of consuming local food always right let's move on to the next chapter 4r concept take care of our earth with the 4r popular one is the 3r recycle reduce and reuse concept there is extra one here that is the replace let's talk about each of these with some examples what does it mean or what are the examples for recycling if we produce compost from the waste food that is a recycle process or if you just uh, recycle the bottles or the from the empty or the old bottles if you make new glass products that is recycling process also if we can produce uh, the plastic from the polythene or plastic again that's a recycle process but the same product we can't produce or secondary product we can produce as an example from polythene we can produce that flower pots plastic flower pots that is a kind of recycling process uh, and what does it mean this reducing this example you can see if the consumption we can reduce conservation of water repairing leaks closing the faucets fully also uh, if uh, when using the electricity if we can unpack the unnecessary equipment or if we can walk for a short distance without traveling with the bus without traveling with kind of vehicle uh, we can reduce the consumption of things and the next one reusing some things we can use reuse the best thing is if you can use a polythene bag twice you can reduce the consumption of polythene bags of the whole world by half if each and every person do this one also reusing some things old books we can reuse for another purpose also the bags or some other items clothes if we can reuse if we can use it once again we can reduce the production by half now let's go to the replacing things replacing best thing once we cut off a tree if you are planting new plant that is a replacement of it also uh, just like once we the use or the used up kind of uh, waste matters or just like the vegetable particles or something from that if we uh, can produce compost and replace the artificial fertilizers with compost that is the replacing process and uh, instead of using new ones if you use old ones for that option at the replacement of it and going for alternatives is replacement if we produce 
electricity from the fuel or if you can go to the hydro power or the solar power that is a replacement likewise these are the four R concept recycle reduce reuse and replace then questions what does for R stand for reduce recycle reuse replace what type of processes make the flower pots by waste polythene it's a recycling process flower pots by waste polythene what type of process using common eco-friendly bags instead of polythene bags what is it it's replacement replacement that the, the normal eco-friendly bands replace the polythenes what is the best waste management method that could be a Apply to organic kitchen waste. I said that recycling, making compost, recycling method. Energy management. See this diagram. You can see how to manage the electricity. We should be very wise or the intelligent when handling the present energy resources because normally people have gone for the uh, non renewable sources nowadays just like the fossil fuel types fossil fuels they are non-renewable once we used up the end of or the nuclear sources just like uh, nuclear sources like uranium or plutonium or such things they also finish us one day that's why we have to go for alternative things when managing the energy look at the examples given here solar energy for the supply and also these are solar roofs and electric vehicles used and the wind energy and hydroelectricity likewise uh, always going for alternatives when managing energy is very important and also we have to try to cut off unnecessary wastage of electricity or unnecessary wastage of other energy sources Questions and answers. Write five C's reasons for energy crisis. Growth of human population. That is the main reason for the energy crisis. Increase of industries. And the industries are made to produce good to improve the human lives. When the human number of humans increase, then the industries increases. Overconsumption of energy and wastage of energy. Wasting energy and non-investigations of the alternatives, not going for the alternatives, not investigating alternative options. That's what those are the main five reasons for the energy crisis. More activities is kind of thing not applicable to all the countries. Also, and kind of wastage of energy. And political problems comes as another one. Uh, political Actually, battles, a battle into the power, waste out a lot of energy and energy sources. Next question suggests some solutions to minimize present energy crisis. These are the solutions. Monitoring daily energy consumption using digital advanced method, a smart method, we can do that. And energy auditing, aware of people. And uh, that is the best thing always, the people themselves. With their attitudes, if they are doing, if they are doing that one, it's very easy to government to reduce it. Making the public enthusiastic to save energy. That means enthusiastic means making them or the promoting them to do that one, making them more interested to do save energy. And the mass media has a lot of responsibility of doing this one. Increasing energy efficiency, just like replacing that filament bulb with LED. LEDs consume less electricity. Also, just like using the LED televisions instead of normal cathode ray televisions. And likewise, using smart devices, we can increase the efficiency. Sustainable energy use, using, saving for the future. Using and saving, use and save. That's the meaning of sustainability. Switch the renewable energy resources like solar energy or wind energy from non-renewable to renewable we can switch on. Next, alternative energy resources can replace non-renewable energy resources. What are the non-renewable energy resources? State such alternative energies, not non-renewable, it's as alternatives. These are the options. 
solar energy, wind energy, GTE means geothermal energy and hydro energy, hydroelectricity or such things and the sea waves. These are the sources. Resources asked or the, these are the options for it. Next, energy management in the architecture. Look at this modern building complex. How do they manage the energy? First, I will start from the rooftop. There is a solar panel to capture the solar energy. And it's water harvesting roof. It's collecting the rainwater. And rainwater is temporary storing here in this. And this rainwater can be used for the garden and other purposes. And the other thing, the ventilation. There's good ventilation. You can see the path ventilation, how the ventilation is provided and uh, free air or the the free cooling system with the natural wind and uh, this glass window shows us natural solar energy is using here natural sunlight therefore always we should have to go to the, the use that natural resources natural rain natural sunlight to produce electricity natural sunlight to light up the rooms and natural ventilation to cool down the rooms likewise uh, managing energy in these buildings is very important and well planning here and the space management you can see the garage has made under the ground and likewise always planning to manage energy and matter is really important in architecture uh, questions here how can energy waste and minimize by using modern technology by installing solar systems we discuss that by planning building to get natural light and ventilation and fixing and using energy efficient devices or implementing energy smart systems energy orienting systems are very important 94th question uh, in an energy efficient house at which direction must the windows be placed good question here if you place the windows east and west the house will get more heated that will be a kind of uh, problem we have to cool down the house with using the electric fans or air conditioners therefore best play best side to keep the windows is north and south or oh, don't keep it east or west that's the rule here environmental acts look at this fact in 1988 people agreed at Montreal city and they agreed to a protocol to reduce so the ban these consumption of these things chlorofluorocarbon hail and gas and hydrofluorocarbon and trichloroethene likewise to reduce carbon tetrachloride these are ozone depleting substances to protect the ozone layer Montreal protocol was signed by a lot of nations in 1988. In 1997 another protocol was signed that is the Kyoto Protocol. It was signed uh, to reduce the greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, methane, dinitrogen oxide and HFC again hydrofluorocarbon and the PFT polyfluorocarbon likewise to reduce this one. Then the Montreal Protocol to save ozone layer, Kyoto Protocol to save the greenhouse gases questions what is the act implemented to control the emission of gases harmful to ozone layer montreal protocol what is the act implemented to greenhouse if that is kyoto protocol if there is non-authorized industry nearby your house to which organization you must local organizations if there is a problem related to the industry to which organization we have to complain this is the organization Ministry of Environment in Sri Lanka you have to complain to this one and also Central Environmental Authority out of these two to any authority you can complain about that non-authorized industry and if a pollution occur around your house 98 which institute grant permissions to cut down trees and situated in your gardens there is a kind of institute that is the state timber corporation you have to take permissions from them to cut down the trees 
and mosquitoes spread is another problem with the urbanization higher population and a lot of problems you can see this one there are several places highlighted where the water is collected these are the mosquito breeding places and mosquitoes lead lot of uh, diseases different type of diseases and if you just consider these ones these water collecting uh, ornamental items and also these drains and water pits uh, gutters likewise wastewater collecting places and ponds pools likewise you can see the leak in faucets and the, some dustbins or some canisters tires and such other things likewise mosquitoes can breed easily in them and they can cause lot of diseases that's the main fact question state five common diseases spread by mosquitoes we can write many here dengue disease one of popular one malaria chikungunya encephalitis types and yellow fever and filariasis or the elephantiasis this type of ones can spread through the mosquitoes and sika it's rare in Sri Lanka, rarely found in Sri Lanka, but these six are very common. Dengue is very common disease caused by the mosquitoes. It is the 99th question. Let's see the last question, 100th question. Write the chemical formula following. Methane chemical formula CH4. Ozone O3. Carbon monoxide CO. One oxygen. Chlorofluorocarbon. Like this. 1 carbon, 3 chlorines and 1 fluorine, chlorofluorocarbon and urea CO, NH2, 2 ice, this is urea and caustic soda, NaOH, polyvinyl chloride, poly means this is a kind of polymer, vinyl chloride is this, H2C and CHCl and poly means this type of ones connecting as a chain, polychain, nitrous oxide N2O. And this is the end of all discussion of all the questions. If you just gain something from the video, you can just press the like button and subscribe to keep subscription of the but uh, the channel. We will discuss a lot of lessons through this one also to get notification, press the bell icon. And next we will meet from the next video related to this same unit. Uh, so till that, goodbye everybody.